Hello, welcome to Shipwrecks. I am Ghost in the Hella, and welcome back to Witchy Life Story. Uh, the game where <laughs> we <laughs> are an absolute pill. And if you just heard a loud beeping sound, that's just my dryer finishing. Sorry about that. Uh, and if you hear rattling and bumping, that is the cats having their afternoon kibbles. All right, uh, I am having a little difficulty, shockingly, with the little computer that I used to read the chat. So I cannot currently see the chat. So if anyone's there, hello, greetings, welcome. All right, so for anyone who has not been following along, we are Ghost Von Teasel. Uh, we are kind of a witch in training. Our grandmother was requested to come to this town of Flora to help with their big festival. Um, and she sent us instead. And it's kind of like a disciplinary action. Um, baby boy, you have kibbles. You don't need to jump in the sink, you weirdo. So, we're kind of helping out the townsfolk. They're learning to trust us. They probably shouldn't. We're kind of a dick. Um, we have our bird friend slash familiar, Ramsey, who is definitely the smart and sensible one in this dynamic. If you hear loud crinkling behind me, that's Little Bear settling into a box full of crinkle paper. Hi, son. Good boy. Um, let's see what else. Oh, and tonight is the full moon. So we're halfway through our two week commitment here in Flora. Um, and we're planning to do some sort of big ceremony tonight, the night of the full moon, that will like solve everybody's problems. Therefore, they won't need us anymore. Therefore, we can go home early, which I'm not really sure why we want to go home. Our family kind of seems like assholes. But this is Ghost Von Teasel's plan. Okay, little computer is finally acknowledging my existence. So let's see if we can get this up and running. All right. Hopefully that's, um, let's see. All right, so I'm gonna have to reload that page, which means if anybody has said anything in chat, I will have missed it. So sorry about that. <sighs> but hopefully it'll be working now. All right, so let's tuck in. Tonight's the night, Ramsey. It's finally the full moon. <laughs> All our work is going to pay off. And then we're out of here. <laughs> Ramsey, why do you look so happy about this? I don't think you were on board with this plan. Here, let me write some invitations real quick. Oh, we're inviting everybody. Cool. I guess that makes sense if we're going to help solve everybody's problems immediately, supposedly. You grab some paper and a pen. Dear resident of Flora, meet me tonight at the festival grounds. Sincerely, your village witch, Ghost Von Teasel. That should do the trick. Ramsey, I need you to del deliver all of these to everyone today. Make sure they get them. I can't wait. Soon it'll just be me and my experiments, with no one to bother me with their requests. I'm going to finish up around here. I'll meet you in the village later tonight, under the full moon. Alright. Do we not... Do we not have any requests? Oh, maybe I opened them last night? Like at the end of the stream? Did I open them at the end of the stream? No, we just don't have any orders? What the fuck? Since when do we not have any orders? What? Alright, well, I guess I'm gonna... 
tend to my garden anyway. Snippy, snippy. <sighs> Soothing gardening. Pull some weeds. The gardening's so nice. So pretty and chill. <laughs> Unlike our absolute madcap um, protagonist. Okay, snippy snippy time. Oh, little computer. <sighs> we really need a more reliable thing for our chat rather than this little computer because it has been having fits lately. And it's gone again. Alright, well... Let's see if we can get that. Oh my god. If we can get that back. But first, kitten cam. Oh, kitten cam. Is your sister just going off on that kibble toy all by herself? Hey, little bear. Sun boy. It's my beautiful son. Hey, little bear. Okay. A little more gardening. Snip, snip. Snip, snip. <laughs> snip, snip. Snip, snip. Snip, snip. Snip, snip. And snip, snip. Alright, and do the weeding. Do the watering. Sounds like she just batted her kibble ball into an obstacle. All right. Let's make some boop. Oh, right. Why only two? Did the first one not go? Well, that's weird. All right. Let's see. I have no idea what I need more of, honestly. Especially since I don't seem to have any orders. So, I don't know. Maybe just save the bags of poop. Go home. Little computer, why are you like this? Alright. Let's do some tarot. Yeah, or hang on. Either or. Mm. Alright, let's try the two card spread. First card is the outcome for option A, and second is the outcome for option B. Um, mm. Option A is leaving town. Which I'm sure is not actually going to happen, but mm -hmm. option B is staying in town. Let's go with that. Okay, so option A, leaving town. The lovers, oh my. Union of opposites, cooperation, choices, duality, relationships. I mean, that seems more like staying in town, but sure. <laughs> Option B, justice. Decision making, deliberation, fairness, negotiation. Certainly is the more fair thing to do. Oh my fucking god. Okay, so the little computer is like staying on for a few seconds and then turning off again. Which is quite irritating. Are you trying to get my attention, Ramsey? Do you have something for me? <laughs> is it treat time? I want to be bribed. I want to see if you've got something for me later. Although, you sad. Oh no, you're sad. No. Ooh, you have a shiny thing. Hmm. Alright, well, let's, let's go about the town. Let's see what's up. Oh, okay then. So we're just going straight to nighttime. All right then, <clears throat> you arrive at the festival grounds. The full moon shines brightly in the clear sky. Look, everyone's here already. 
this is going to go off without a hitch. Time to get myself together. You walk over to everyone. Oh no, she's still sick. Oh, a ritual. How lovely. I should be baking. I'm tired. It is pretty late. The studio is so, still such a mess. Everything will be fine. Perfectly fine. Ahem. <clears throat> See, Ghost is here now. Thank you, Ruth. Welcome to the ritual. Don't worry, it's perfectly safe. I'm just going to say a few words, use some power of this wonderful full moon, and then we can all be on our way. Perfect festival guaranteed. All right, let's get this show on the road then. Ramsey, get into place. <laughs> you take a deep breath. Oh, full moon. With your bright shining light, lend us your power on this very night. Provide us a clear path for us to walk away to a successful festival completely unblocked. We've worked this week to fix what was broken, so please acknowledge our devotion. The ritual is complete. <sighs> you relax your body and take another deep breath. All right, I think we're good. Everyone feel better now? Baby girl, get off the counter. I do not feel better when you're on the counter, baby girl. I feel full of... Achoo. You need to get home. Uh-oh. Wait, maybe it'll just take more time to work? That's right, it might take some time to work. You can't rush magic. But isn't that what you're trying to do? I knew this would happen. Oh, I missed, I missed the second thing she said, but I'm assuming it was snarky. Naisha! No, I read that letter. I know the truth. Ghost has been messing with us this entire time. Just like they did with Coven Politan. But I've been able to get my work done. Achoo. Mel, there's something you really should know. Oh no, Naisha is going to tell. Your beloved Avon Elsit from Coven Politan is Ghost Von Teasel. Wait, what? Ghost, is that true? That means all those rituals that backfired. Mel, I... And it's not just those rituals. It's all the magic they've done for us here, too. With all of ghosts boasting about their magic, don't you think things have only gotten weirder around here? Like Devin at the lake party. You were abnormally social. That's true, but I did ask for a spell to make friends. That's exactly what I mean. Naisha, let's calm down for a moment. You're not wrong, but perhaps there's an explanation. Yeah, the explanation is my half-assery. Have you forgotten Ghost's relaxation spell? You wanted to go shopping. Mel, that might explain the other day. Yeah, Ruth was pretty angry, but we acted like brats. Okay, yes, but I've never seen Ruth like that. Ramsey, this isn't good. <laughs> I talked to the Madelines. To those cookies you're working on? Cakes. They said they were possessed by their spirit. They called me a fool. Ghost helped me talk to spirits, too. Then they destroyed my studio. I got a dog. Though I wanted a hot date. But I do love my dog. Oh, I love Jonas. He's a good boy. Psst, Ramsey. I think we should... <gasps> Run is... What I was thinking, slowly sneak away is pretty good. And 
throw Ramsey as a distraction is definitely the funniest answer. It does seem cruel, though. Although he can fly. But, yeah. Run! You try to make a break for it. However, before he can take even three steps... No. What? I'm just, uh, stretching? This is it. This is the end. You nod to Ramsey to let him know. It's been good times. But you know when your gran hears about this, it's not just your training that will come to an end. Did I really speak to the Madelines? You try to hold it in, but... <laughs> All the options are explode. Okay then, we're gonna explode. No, you didn't! It was me, ghost! Twas I! And I admit to everything! Jean, I wanted to eat those Madelines so bad, but you kept throwing them in the trash. And Mel, yeah, I am Avon Elsett, and what I did wasn't right at all. I used Coven Politan to release my frustrations with my family and make fun of witches. I never thought of the consequences of my actions. And more recently, when you asked me to help you, I could tell how badly you wanted to get your work done. But I pushed it too far. Naisha. Mm-hmm. I've never talked to spirits successfully. That was supposed to be in my next chunk of training before I got sent here. Ruth. Yes, ghost. I slipped something extra into your spells. Don't ask me what, which I know sounds bad. But you seemed like you needed the extra push. Devon. Kind of same with you, except I used the runes. Not really my specialty, but desperate times call for desperate measures, or so I thought. And Jonas, what? Well, you're just kind of easy to mess with, so for real? For real? This is my first time having to use witchcraft to help folks out. I make the spells, but... I feel like my magic is never enough. So I tried energy readings, incantations, or extra ingredients. I wanted everyone to think I was great. I just wanted to do my own thing, or I can't resist trying new things. I wanted everyone to think I was great. Though I wouldn't have messed up this bad if I were actually great. Even though this full moon ritual is a ploy, the full moon is a very powerful way to amplify magic. I was hoping to use it to fix everyone's problems tonight so I could get out of here. But it looks like I've actually done the opposite. Magic isn't supposed to be self-serving or for proving yourself or using people. It's about energy and intention. My job as a witch is to help our energies work together and strengthen our intention. That's the only way to accomplish things we can't do alone. That means my energy, your energy, and our... I mean, your community's energy are supposed to work together to put on the best harvest festival Flora has ever seen. But I've done the opposite as a witch. Maybe my family is right. Maybe I really am. That's enough. Your magic did get out of hand, but how many of us asked for your magic, expecting it to solve our problems immediately? Or ask Ghost to do even more than we originally asked? Everyone remains silent. I don't say this to excuse Ghost's actions. However, Ghost is correct that magic is all about energy and intention. We never intended to make the magic work. Instead of facing our problems as a community, we just used magic to cover up and hide from our problems. Whether we want to admit it or not, that's why the last witch left, too. It's why Flora is the way it is today. I won't keep repeating that mistake. 
If we are going to start being more honest with each other, there's something I need to say. <laughs> I got something to say. Oh, well. This is my last term as mayor. After this, I intend to travel all over the world. It's a dream I've had for a while, and I'm not getting any younger, so... Gran, that's... that's great. Naisha, I should have said this ages ago and kept saying it, but I'm proud of you. Oh. This has gotten so heartfelt. Not to ruin the mood, but who will be Bay Mel? I think you'd be an excellent candidate for mayor. I'd be happy to endorse you. Uh, wow. That beats so much for you to say that. Uh, can I think it over? Of course. Devin turns to Naisha. I don't want to perform at the festival. I'd rather work together with local musicians. Bring the community in more, you know? Wow, really? That sounds like a great idea. I'm sure Gran and Mel would be happy to help. I thought you'd be disappointed. Devin, I would never be disappointed. You're my best friend. I'm so sorry I made you feel that way. I was just so worried about the festival. You know that special talent you have of reaching into people's souls and tearing them out? Oh, that that is quite the special talent. Er, yeah? Well, your music can also reach into po people's souls and heal them. Wait, do they literally have a power of, like, reaching into people's souls and tearing them out? Because that's something we should have known about by now, I would think. In fact, you just gave me an idea. What if I put together a community art project for the festival, too? That sounds amazing. Let's bring this community together. Mel is right. I'm too focused on the Madelines, but I want to get them right, so please have patience. I know I get tunnel visioned and push myself too hard. We all want this festival to succeed, but can we consider the festival a success if we burn ourselves out? Ruth is right. We need to approach this festival as a community. All six or seven of us. Since everyone's making big confessions, I feel like I have to make one too, but, uh, well, I don't know if I have anything to confess, but I know how hard it is to be honest with people, but maybe if we all try together, it'll be easier for all of us. So yeah. Does anyone else have anything else they'd like to say? You look around and see everyone chatting amongst themselves. Is it just you, or... Do you feel like the energy of Flora just shifted? Did you plan for this? Uh. <laughs> I mean, I gotta do it, right? <laughs> My most successful experiment yet. Don't worry, I know you didn't. But I think Margie, your gran, did. Huh? What do you mean? I think it's getting pretty late. If there's one thing we could all use, it's a little rest, don't you think? Everyone nods in agreement. How about we wrap this up now? <clears throat> Everyone nods in agreement again as they let out yawns. You all make your way home. Yeah, that did not go how I expected either. Do you think what Ruth said about Gran is right? Yeah, I guess I wouldn't put it past her either. Grant's teaching methods have always been a little... different. But it looks like we're sticking around till the festival. For some reason, I'm feeling pretty happy about that. Aww. Yeah, with everyone working together, maybe we can do something pretty cool. Well, we should do as Ruth said and get some rest. Oh, interesting. Full moon success. That actually kind of sort of worked. So, does that mean there is an option for it to fail? 
How did we not fail? We've been trying so hard to be terrible. Okay, Ramsey, do you have anything for me? Okay, I'll give you a crow tree. Nothing from Ramsey. All right, well, fair enough. Let's go to sleep. Now, do you have anything shiny for me? Is it crystal time? One crow treat coming up. What did you find this time? Ooh, pretty. Celestine. This is one of my favorites. Such a nice shade of blue. Gran would like this one, too. I'll have to show it to her when we see her again. So is Ramsey just, like, out mining all day? <laughs> for now, though, we'll put it away for safekeeping. Alright, ah, uh, there we go. Now we've got some orders. Dear Ghost, I think I'm ready to take the first steps toward leaving Flora. But I won't lie, the idea of leaving makes me nervous. I wish there was some way to take Flora with me wherever I go. Are there incense or anything that could help? Sincerely, Ruth. Okay. Hello, ghost. I am a sad grump who needs to be kinder to myself. I can't keep letting mean people get to me. Do you have a charm for that? Best regards, Jean. Okay. And last but certainly not least, ghost. I think I figured out the music for the festival, but I still have to perform it. I think the piece is really good, but I just can't imagine myself playing with confidence. Maybe some incense to help me summon up the courage could help? Thank you, Devin. All right. Uh, let's see. So we have got orders for Ruth. Incense. Okay. Incense. That's lavender. That looks like it's like gardenia. No, I'm sorry, geranium. That's what I was actually thinking. I just fucked it up in my head. Geranium. And yarrow. Okay. What else we got? Jean, he needs a charm to be kinder to himself. Well, couldn't we all use that? That was lavender again, I believe. Yup. Pink. Is that hollyhock? Hollyhock. And allium. Allium. All right, and Devin. Oh, okay, so another incense. Wow, we're making a lot of incense. We made several last week, too. All right. It's the star chamomile. Yum, yum, yum. Is that yarrow again? Yep, yarrow. And geranium. All right. Let's make some shit. And we're going to have to buy some incense stuff. Um, let's, oops. Let's gather our materials and definitely buy some incense stuff. Mm. Yoink, yoink, and just get another charm thing. Alright, let's do a little gardening. Alright, you are out of sync with everything else, sorry. There we go. 
these only grow every other day but I think we've probably got plenty of them maybe we'll find out I'll yell. Do a little weeding. Do a little snippy snippy. Snippy snappy. Do a little watering. Make everybody fresh and happy. Okay. Time for more snippy snappy. Snip 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 snap snip snap. Weedy weedy. Weedy weedy, weedy weedy. Water, 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 water. Okay. <clears throat> and make some more bags of poop. Alright. Okay. We got lots of poop. Alright, so. Let's see. Check our reserves. I mean, we're pretty stocked on those things. Could probably use more lavender, especially since it's in two things. Are we doing on the arrow? The arrow's pretty good. Alright, so maybe. Hmm, maybe some extra lavender and chamomile? Maybe some hollyhock? Alright. Like, we're doing fine. But, couldn't hurt, right? Snippy, 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 snippy. Okay. You're the arrow or the calendula? I can never tell when you're closed. Ugh, you're the calendula. This is why I have so much fucking calendula. <laughs> Alright. I've still got one bag of poop, so there we go. There's the yarrow. And snippy snippy. Water, water. Okay. We are gardened up. Alright, let's make some spells. Let's make some incense with lavender, geranium, and yarrow. I don't know why I'm talking like Jonas when it's not Jonas's. Memory incense. Keep on crafting. Alright, so let's make a charm. To help Jean be nicer to himself. Alright, so we got lavender, hollyhock, and allium. Alright. Release charm. withholding comment. Alright, last but certainly not least. Incense with chamomile. Chamomile, there we go. Yarrow. And geranium. Beautiful. Confidence incense. Alright, let's hit the town. doing that hitting home instead of village it's like no i'm already here all right let's see let's start with devon let's go counterclockwise or no that's i guess clockwise let's go clockwise today you arrive at the studio you don't hear any music coming in from inside though i wonder if devon is actually in there you open the door and see devon sitting by the window Ghost, you're here! Devin runs over to you. Do you have it? Do you have it? Whoa. 
I assume you mean the spell. Confidence. Yes, this looks perfect. So, you've got a song written then? Yeah, I do. After all the community talk at the full moon ritual, I thought talking to some local musicians would help. So Mel introduced me to some of them. After I finished speaking with them, I sat down and just wrote and wrote and wrote. Things finally clicked. Yeah, I'm sharing it with Mel and Ruth today, but I wanted you to be the first one to hear it. Aww, really? Mm-hmm. Even with everything that's happened, I could write this song because of you. But no more runes, okay? Yes, yes. If I start to panic, I want to figure out how to work through it. But not force my way through it, if that makes sense. Yeah, I get it. So you want to hear it? Of course. <laughs> Rock on, my friend. <laughs> I don't think it's... I don't really think it's that kind of song, but hopefully you'll still enjoy it. Devin takes a seat and brings out their guitar. Oh, they're so cute. As they do, suddenly you feel transported somewhere else, sitting around a fire with old friends, a bright sunshine-filled garden. You can taste something savory. Perhaps it's a stew? You realize these are all places of and things of comfort. There's a brightness to it, a sense of optimism. Even with long, hard days ahead, there will always be something good on the other side. As the chorus swells, you get a feeling of reassurance that all your work will pay off. Somehow, everything seems possible. Everyone will work together, and that collective energy will ensure the Harvest Festival's success. They won't even need a witch's blessing, and somehow, you feel like that's exactly how it should be. Devin's song comes to an end. They take a deep breath. So, what did you think? <laughs> was that some sort of spell? That was amazing! It felt like I was bewitched or something. I don't understand it. Wow, um, it was just a normal song. Why did that piece of music affect you so much? I wonder... I wonder if your music had such a strong effect because... Well, because we're friends. Perhaps the strength of our bond amplified the power of the song. You see Devin turn bright red. Now I'm the speechless one. But of course, there's still the matter of playing for Ruth and Mel. That's the real reason I asked for the spell. When do you have to play for them? I'll probably head over a little after you leave. You know Devin asked you not to use runes anymore, but you still feel compelled to help them further. Devin said they wanted something that would help them work through their fear. Perhaps there is something more you can do. Devin, have you ever heard of Countdown Mediation? Mediation? Uh, I don't want to risk the confidence spell with any other magic. It's not really magic. It is one of the techniques witches use to quiet the mind before performing magic. It's like maybe meditation? I don't see why a non-witch couldn't use it too, especially before something like a musical performance. Of course, we only have to try it if you want. Devin looks apprehensive. You can't blame them either. How much experience do you have with this? Uh, in all honesty, it's, prob it's one of those things I probably need to practice more. I know the basic principles, but I'm not always successful in pulling it off. But I think I'll, it'll help the effectiveness of the confidence incense. And increase your confidence in general, without the spell. Hmm. Let's try it then. Maybe this is the kind of technique I've been looking for. Alright, let's get started then. You take the confidence and sense and light them. You take a seat across from Devon. Let's close our eyes. We're going to count down from 10. For each number, we'll focus on something. I usually use colors. There are currently 10 different colors in my garden, so we can work with those. So what am I doing? I'm going to say a number and a color. 
and I want you to focus on that color. The idea is to force your brain to focus on something other than your anxiety. Okay, let's start. 10. A red rose. Devin takes a deep breath. You can tell they're still uncomfortable, but you're glad they're trying. Nine. Maybe this will work. The orange calendula. Eight. Yellow yarrow. They take another deep breath. This one is more noticeably deeper and longer than their initial one. You notice th that your breath is also deeper and longer, too. Seven. Green rosemary. Devin's shoulders relax. You're impressed they've made it this far. Your mind usually starts to wander around now. Six. Blue pea flower. Devin takes another deep breath. Five, pink hollyhock. You notice their knees relax. They fall a little closer to the ground. Four, purple lavender. Their head drops. Are they asleep? Three, burgundy geranium. It's kind of just another shade of red, but sure. Devon takes an even deeper, long breath. No, they're not asleep. You could sense the focus in that breath. Two, white chamomile. Almost there. One, black allium. Okay, I was definitely reading that as purple. Black, really? Devon completely relaxes and takes another long, deep breath. You allow them to sit there for an extra moment. You're impressed by how well they've done. Though you really won't know until they reopen their eyes. Devon, open your eyes. Devon raises their head and slowly opens their eyes. The panic and sense of unease that was there before are gone. Are you sure that wasn't magic? I feel so much calmer now. Calmer, but not out of it or like sleepy. Like, I feel like I can do things. Like, I want to do things. This is weird. That's probably part the meditation and part the in incense. Wow. I think... I think I'm ready to play for Ruth and Mel. That's great. Do you want me to go with you? Actually, I think I'll go on my own. I think I've got the confidence this time. And it's all thanks to you. Remember, witchcraft is a melding of energies, so it's not just mine. I guess you're right. Sometimes I wish I had something to carry with me all the time. Like something to remind me of the power of my energy. Something to carry. Hmm. Oh, is that silly? No, not at all. Sorry, I was just a little lost in thought, is all. I should get going. I don't want to keep Mel and Ruth waiting. Thanks again for all your help, Ghost. Of course, any time. Devin wants something they could always carry. What about that locket at Jimena's store? Maybe I could craft something out of that. Maybe I can haggle down the price, too. Yeah, the prices on those things are ins <laughs> unreasonable. All right, I will be right back. I just want to stir the chili. Jean. Walk up to Jean's cafe. Mmm, Jean's baking something super yummy. Excuse me. You walk into the cafe. You notice there's only one customer, but you can't tell who they are behind the newspaper they're reading. Hey, Jean! 
Ghost, what are you doing here? Is that how you greet all your customers? Something smells good. No snacks today. Only work. What? Please leave. Oh. Let's try this again. Okay. I brought your spell. Release charm. Release charm. Release charm. What is this? The release charm you asked for? I didn't ask for that. Yeah, I bet Mel did that. But I got a letter from you. Don't tell me he's refusing a spell again. You thought you were past that. I never sent a letter. You hear the rustling of the newspaper. You look over at the other customer. You see them wearing oversized sunglasses and a hat. Maybe they have a mustache, too? But when you make eye contact, they quickly pull the newspaper back up. Eavesdropper. But the letter had your name on it. I told you I never wrote the letter. Maybe you wrote it in your sleep? I do not write in my sleep. I know, you have a twin. I do not have a twin. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to get back to. The person reading the newspaper clears their throat. You and Jean look over at them. <clears throat> I think I have an explanation. The customer drops their newspaper and removes their hat, sunglasses, and mustache. I ordered the spell, Jean. Mel, you should be home. You're still sick. You didn't realize that customer was your wife? He's been too wrapped up in baking Madeleines to notice much these days. Just go and look at the trash. You walk over to the trash can. It's filled to the brim with Madeleines. They're all failures. And how would you know? Did you let anyone try them? All of these Madeleines are failures? But they smell so good and they look baked to a perfect light gold. I do not serve failure at this cafe. Jean and Mel continue to quarrel, but you can't take your eyes off the trash can. You can feel the Madeleine's radiating heat. These Madeleine's are fresh. Your mouth begins to water. There doesn't seem to be anything else in this trash can, so really, it's just a bin full of fresh, perfectly baked Madeleine's. That means you could totally... All because one critic said... That critic again? Who cares about critics when there's a whole bin full of Madeleines in front of you? <laughs> Eat a Madeline. Don't mind if I do. Yes, ghost. There's no need to hold back now. Just reach your hand out and... Ghost, what are you doing? I, uh, um... Uh, they were calling me. I know that's a lie. But they were! A thousand little voices saying, Eat me! Eat me! <laughs> Those voices were in your stomach. You know what? Mel's right! This tyranny ends today! Uh, um, I never said anything about tyranny. You take your hand and shove it into the trash bin of Madeline's. Take a fistful of Madeleines. You lock eyes with Jean as you shove the fistful of Madeleines into your mouth. Who cares that you can barely chew them? They're finally in your mouth. That's what she said. And that's all that matters. You just... You just ate from the... What? Does that bother you? Next thing you know, Mel shoves her hand into the trash bin of Madeline's, locks eyes with Jean, and shoves a fistful of Madeline's into her mouth. She coughs from hardly being able to breathe, but she stands proud in her defiance. You both just... You both just ate! You try to keep your eyes locked on Jean, but... But... This buttery flavor... This light, fluffy texture... Like a delicate cloud of... Magic. This is true magic. Jean, these are truly... You see Jean's expression change from horror to... Jean, let me make some tea. Jean runs off to the kitchen and brings a tea tray. Let me grab a platter for the battle -ins. 
Mel grabs a platter, puts some madeleines on it, and brings it back to the table. Jean, you simply must serve these at the festival. Although ideally not from a trash bin. How could you ever think these were bad? Jean and Mel look at each other. There was a critic who came to the cafe. I didn't know he was coming until a few hours before, so I rushed and baked some madeleines along with a few other things. But while rushing to get everything, I forgot about the madeleines and let them bake too long. The next day, he said my dry madeleines revolted him in his review. I see. But that's the only negative review Jean's Café has ever gotten, isn't that right? Wow, really? That's impressive! Exactly! That's why I... I ordered the release charm. You ordered the spell? That explains the weird letter. Mel, I just want you to move on from that one single critic who caught you on the wrong day. Honestly, he probably knew that when he wrote the review. When I had my issues in the city, you had the idea to move out here so I could be happy. So I could get away from all the people who didn't think I was capable. I realize how much of a sacrifice that was for you. This charm is my way of telling you not to let those kinds of people get you down. You're so talented, Joel. It's not worth spending your time on people who think otherwise. Thank you. Is Jean... Is Jean smiling? He is so cute. He's got a little smile. I suppose you won't be needing that curse. Curse? What curse? Covenant Politan says only the most advanced witches should perform curses. And Ghost, you're still a witch in training. No, I don't think so. I should start preparing the ingredients for the batter. That way we can make it a day or so ahead, then bake all the madelines the day of. We could serve local tea blends along with them. Yes, I think that's an excellent idea. Let me write that down on my to-do list. I have a meeting with the vendors coming up, so I can mention it then. It won't be too much work. Not at all. Mel raises her cup of tea. To the festival! To the festival? To the festival! Jean and Mel chug the rest of their tea. Glug, glug, glug. Let's do this! Yes. Suddenly, Jean and Mel take off, leaving you at the table. But you overhear them talking. You know, maybe you should consider writing that cookbook you've been thinking about after the festival. I keep all my recipes in my head. Jean memorizes all his recipes? But maybe writing them down would be good. Also, please go home and rest. Fine! Hey, doesn't Jimena's shop have an old journal? I bet Jean could use that. And I could enchant it for him, too. I wonder if that would be a good idea. Okay. Let's talk to Ruth. You walk up to Ruth's home. God, I'm actually starting to feel like I've got a stuffy nose after doing the Mel voice so much. <laughs> Oh, God. Given myself a cold by power of suggestion alone. <laughs> you walk up to Ruth's home. After the full moon ritual, you wonder what state she'll be in. You knock on the door. Ghost, how good to see you. Are you here to deliver my spell? Yep. It's right here. Memory incense. Memory incense. You hand the memory incense to Ruth. Yes, these should help. What are you trying to do? You know what I mentioned at the full moon ritual? You not being mayor and going traveling? Yes. So you intend to do that? Or you're not? No, I am, but as much as the idea of exploring the world excites me, 
I've never really left Flora, so the idea also terrifies me. I see. I feel that. Why pressure yourself to go when you know you can be comfortable right here? Yes, I think... I think that's precisely it. I am comfortable in Flora, even with my desire to leave. It's strange. I wish I could just take it with me wherever I go. Is that what the memory spell is for? Mm-hmm. Before I used these incense, I thought of taking a walk. Would you care to join me? Hmm. A grand adventure with Ruth. Lead the way. While I appreciate the enthusiasm, you might be getting yourself a little too excited. I say as I completely knock my uh, notebook onto the floor in my excitement. Just get so jazzed for a walk with Ruth. You and Ruth head out on your walk around Flora. First you come to the lake. I have many happy memories with my daughter and Naisha here. Oh, both of them are so similar. They loved running and playing in the water and finding small little critters. I still listen to the crickets and the frogs when I come here. The sounds take me right back to their childhoods. Oh, I wish I could take this lake with me wherever I go. Hmm. Hmm. Ruth just might have given you an idea. Yes, yes, you gave her the memory incense, which she can burn once she gets home, but what if you have another tool to help her keep her dearest memories close? Ruth? Yes, ghost. What if I told you I had a tool you could potentially use to take the lake with you? Is this some er experimental magic? No, not at all. I've used it before, and it doesn't require magic at all. It might even approve your ability to use the memory incense. But it's not magic. No, it's more of a sensory tool to help you focus and remember details. Interesting. What does it entail? You're already an avid walker, so you might already be doing some of these things. The gist of it is being very mindful of your surroundings. That's like a mindfulness meditation... Mindfulness walking meditation? I'm not sure how to combine mindfulness meditation with walking meditation linguistically. When I find myself in a place I want to remember, I use my senses to create a sort of snapshot. You can do this by focusing on one sense at a time. Does that all make sense? You're right, it is something I've somewhat done on my walks before. I've never actively tried using my senses to create memories, but I think I'd be willing to try. Great. How about on this walk we do some practice, then? That sounds like a good idea. Since we're already at the lake, let's try focusing on one of our senses here. Let's start with... Smell. So I focus on what I can smell? Yep. I think closing my eyes helps with this one. Okay. Ruth closes her eyes and takes a deep breath. I think I can smell the lake. Maybe it's the algae? It has an earthy smell, but it's not bad. I could also faintly smell what Sean's baking at his cafe. But there's also the smell of cut grass. This is a lot to take in. Yeah, it can be. But don't worry about trying to hold on to everything just yet. I find it usually takes a few sessions to complete a snapshot. That makes sense. I think I'd like to make our way to the forest next. You and Ruth walk to the forest. I always come here when I feel like hiding from the world. I used to be afraid of these woods. When I was a little girl, I played hide-and-seek at night here with friends. I lost my way while looking for a hiding place, and suddenly all the trees looked like monsters. Fortunately, my screams let my friends find me. That's awful. It was at the time, but then I became determined to know these woods. And now we're good friends. Ready to practice one of the senses? Sure. How about... <laughs> taste. Do you mean I'm supposed to eat? No, you don't want to eat anything unless you can identify what it is. Says the person who slipped unidentified things into her potions. 
but they didn't kill her, so. Taste is a little tricky, though, I admit. One way to do it is to take a deep breath and see how the air feels. Hmm, all right. God, breathing in through the mouth is so hard. There we go. Ruth takes a deep breath with her mouth open. Wow, I don't know if this is necessarily taste, but I can feel like I can taste the cool, damp air. It's very clear, almost like drinking water. That was very good. I think you're getting the hang of this. Thank you, I think this is a good exercise. It's also very relaxing, sort of like meditation. Yeah, it is. I think I'd know where I'd like to go next. It's to my secret spot. Whoa, I get to see Ruth's secret spot? <laughs> oh, I didn't say you were coming, dearie. Um, only if you know about it. Follow me. Ruth takes off on a brisk walk through the woods. You can hardly keep up. You notice the elevation is rising. How you know why Ruth is in such great shape? How much further? You'll see. You huff and puff your way up. Ruth seems fine. You come to a sudden clearing. We're here. Wow. After you catch your breath, you look out. You can see all of Flora from here and more. I mean, this is lovely, but I just, I am such a 12-year-old. All I can see is peen. Just... How far up did we just walk? Isn't it wonderful? This isn't my secret spot, if I'm completely honest. Our previous witch showed it to me. I want to try focusing on one of my senses up here. I think that's a great idea. Excuse me, how about you try... Hmm. Sound. Okay. Ruth closes her eyes. Everything sounds so far off. There's a peacefulness to it, though. As if everything is just the way it's meant to be. I wish I could stay here forever, but I know I can't. I know I have to leave, even though I'll be back. When I return from my travels, this is the first spot I'll visit. Ruth turns and looks at you. Thank you for coming up here with me, ghost. Of course. This has been the best workout I've had in a long time. Fortunately, going downhill is much easier. Come on, let's go. <laughs> Come on, girls. You and Ruth make your way back down the mountain and to her home. I think I'll have to practice that sensory technique more later. This might sound strange, considering I just asked you for a way to remember Flora, but I wish I had something to help me cleanse the space, too. Like, as a final way of letting go and preparing myself to move on. Does that make sense? Of course, kind of like taking what you want and then moving on. Yes, I think that's exactly it. Of course, I'm not asking for anything extra. These memory incense should really help. Well, I think it's back to festival preparations. I've been away too long already. I'll be on my way then, too. Bye! Something to help you say goodbye and move on, but in a good way. Torch the town to the ground. <laughs> Maybe a besom could help with that? I'm... My apologies, I have no idea how to pronounce that word. They're for sweeping away energies to make space for new ones. I'm pretty sure I saw a small broom at Jimena's I could use. I wonder if that would be a good idea. Hmm. Talk to Naisha. You walk up to Naisha's home and knock on the door. Ghost, I know why you're here. You want to talk about what happened. Yeah. I've been worried about you. I guess that's fair. It's not every day you see a tornado of art supplies. You seem to have made yourself some interesting friends. How about going to our usual spot and talking about it? Sure, let's go. You and Naisha head to the beach. You feel like she's walking closer to you than usual. God, I don't know how the fuck I'm gonna choose somebody. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> but just romancing every romanceable character. And they're all so lovely. <laughs> like, how do you choose? You arrive at the beach and sit on a couple of rocks. So. So. First, you have to promise not to laugh. I'm a witch. If there's one person who's going to listen to someone about feisty spirits, it's me. I know. It's just the only person who ever believed me was the village witch. So I'm more used to people not believing me. What kind of spirits are they exactly? The last witch called them fibbly nibblies, but I don't know if that's a real thing or not. I've never heard of them, but that doesn't mean anything. Spirits aren't exactly my forte. They got me into so much trouble as a kid. They'd pull on whoever was sitting in front of me's hair. They'd knock supplies off shelves. They'd even eat other kids' lunches. Then I would yell at them to stop and get scolded for shouting in the middle of class. Everyone thought I was acting out for attention, but that wasn't the case. I knew everyone would think I was weird if I told them the truth, so I hid it. And that just made things worse. If the witch believed you, how come she didn't give you a cleansing spell? She tried, but Gran once again believed everything was fine. She thought I'd outgrow it. Clearly, I haven't. The witch left soon after that. It's a good thing I'm here, then. Time to vanish. No. No. See, the problem is, they're... They're my friends. Your friends? Yes. But they ruined your childhood! Yeah, they got me into a lot of trouble, sure. But they're the ones who introduced me to art. And we used to get along most of the time, just people don't understand them. Or me. Instead of listening to me, people would be like, just stop! Which in turn made things worse. Okay, now I'm lost. <sighs> this is turning out to be story time with Naisha, isn't it? You notice Naisha fidgeting a lot with her hands. She must be feeling nervous still. Here. Oh, take Naisha's hand. Although, do you want a hug is also pretty good. She looks up at you and smiles. Thanks, ghost. It looks like she's calmed down a little bit. This is hard to talk about, but here it goes. I'm home alone one day. And, as I usually am, because Gran worked a lot, I hear this weird chattering coming from outside, so I go and take a look. Except I don't see anything. But then I hear it again, but a little further off. So I follow it, but every time I think I've caught up, it's just a little further away. Eventually, the chattering leads me to the old art studio. Gran boarded it up after my parents died, since they ran it. I hear the chattering again, except it's coming from inside this time. I pry a loose board off one of the windows and go inside, and that's when I see everything. Canvases, brushes, paints, charcoal, and more. It was like stumbling into Wonderland. Every time I'd think I'd found everything, their chattering led me to more supplies. Before I know it, it's night and I've created all this stuff. That's when I hear Gran and a group of villagers enter the studio. It ends up they've been looking for me. I hide, thinking I'm in trouble, but no, Gran is just happy I'm safe. <laughs> I usually just kind of ignore typos in, in visual novels at this point, but like, because it's not that uncommon. But, 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 I just, y'all know I'm immature. I just, how am I going to pass up? But, no. But. All right, moving on. I swear I saw a tear go down her face as she looked around the art studio. The only tear I've ever seen from her. She then declares that the village will reopen the studio. From then on, I spend most of my time there. And the fibbly nibblies? I chatted with them every day while I worked, bouncing ideas off of them and stuff. Boom. Without them, I wouldn't be the artist I am today. Wow. Now I want spirit friends. No, I want to meet them. I've never really introduced them to anyone before. They tend not to like anyone else, though. 
They get jealous easily. Do you think there's anything you can do to help me? Or rather, us? As I mentioned before, spirits aren't my forte. And you also want them to stick around. I'll have to think about it. I wonder if they're mad I left for school. Could be. Naisha stands up and takes a big breath. Well, that's my story then. Now you know all about the fibbly nibblies. Are you going to head back to the studio? Yeah. I should probably get to cleaning. They should have hopefully calmed down. They tend to after a big blow up. If there's anything I can do, make sure to let me know. Yeah, will do. Well, I should get going now. Thanks again for the chat. Sure, anytime. Lutel. That is the planet of connection and boundaries, especially in relation to spirits and such. Not surprising, considering Naisha's strained relationship with the Fibli Nibblies. Yeah, incorporating something associated with Pluto could help Naisha. Time to write that in my grimoire. Okay. Mel, you should be asleep. At least she's at home. Please let Mel be better. Please let Mel be better. You approach Mel's house and gently knock on the door. Come in! You enter the home and see Mel curled up on the couch with some soup. You notice she's surrounded by flowers and other foods, too. Don't I look at a sad state? Sorry. As we said at the full moon ritual, it's not entirely your fault. You're not the only one who got carried away. I got so worked up about everything needing to be perfect, about making sure everyone else is having a good time to be at my best, I need to rest. So you're not mad at me? Of course not. I'm madder at myself than anyone. But tell me, do you think... Do you think I'm boring? Huh? <laughs> Can people even be exciting? I think most people are boring, or not really. No, I don't think she's boring. I mean, I did get to see what happens when magic goes wrong. That was an exciting experience. But potentially not a good one. But I wouldn't call it boring. Why do you ask? Seems kind of out of the blue. Because I... I think everyone likes Jonas more than me. You're jealous of... Jonas. <laughs> I am! People are always laughing with him, or like at him, and he's always getting invited to parties. Do you like parties? No, I'm too old for that stuff now, but people just seem to like him. And you don't think people like you? Of course not. I'm the one managing the budgets, and who gets angry over toilets, and who has to tell Jonas and his crew to hurry up. Every what hates me? You retake a look around the room. You notice all the food, flowers, and get well cards. Did Jean get all this stuff for you? No, but he made this soup I'm eating. Then where is all of it from? Various people from the village, by co-workers at the town hall, etc. They heard about me feeling down and sent over all of this. I don't know where they found the time with everything that needs to get done. I want to be showered in gifts. Sure seems like a lot of effort. Or maybe it's all poisoned. I mean, maybe it's all poisoned is the funniest. I want to be showered in gifts is the most in character, but sure seems like a lot of effort. I know I wouldn't do that unless I liked someone. Like, a lot. So you're saying people like me? I think so. Maybe you're like my gran. She's always scolding me, but she's always teaching me, too. And even though she's a little stodgy, she has taught me a lot of neat spells. And without her, I wouldn't be here right now. I don't know where I'd be if I'm completely honest. I'm trying to say that you are necessary, Mel. If everyone were a goofball like Jonas, nothing would get done. There wouldn't be any festival at all. And what's more boring than that? Mel falls silent and looks around the room. You're right. I'm surrounded by the village's love right now, aren't I? Mel looks down at her bowl of soup. 
and John's love too. Oh God, I just almost made myself cry there. <laughs> he loves her so much. He made her so much. What did Jonas bring you? Mel's eyes dart around the room. Oh my God, that brat! His sister is sick from stress and he hasn't come to see me. Knowing Jonas, he probably didn't want to bother. Suddenly, there's a knock at the door. Did he bring over the dog? Oh my God, I hope he brought over the dog. Who could that be? Come in. Jonas walks in. This is perfect timing. What are you doing here? Jean said you weren't feeling well. Actually, I'm feeling a lot better right now. I think some rest has done me good. It's about time you tried that instead of all that magic. No offense, ghost. No, I think we might have overdone it. Oh, hey, Ariana. Good to see you. Anyway, I thought I'd come over to see if you needed any help. Nope, everyone out. What? I just got here. I need to rest to ensure I'm in tip-top shape by tomorrow. This festival isn't going to organize itself. So come on, get, get. Mel shoes you and Jonas out of the house. Jonas, you really should have brought the dog over. She probably would have let you stay if you brought a dog. Well, uh, I guess I'll head back to work. Sheesh, it seems like she's on the mend anyhow. Yeah, I think she'll be all right. Knowing Mel, she'll be up and at him by tomorrow. I should get going, though. Bye. Sounds like Mel struggles with finding balance in her life and realizing people do care about her wellness. Magic. Venus. Maybe Mel should incorporate things attributed to Venus in her life. Let me write that down in my grimoire. Okay. Last stop. Jonas. Doggo! Yes, he brought the doggo. On your way to the town square, you see Jonas and the dog running around together outside. Come here, boy. Oh, what a cute pupper. It looks like someone finally got a bath. Oh, yeah, you did. And now you're a beautiful boy, aren't you? <laughs> Have you given him a name yet? Oh, right. You forgot to give him a name? No, I just forgot to mention it. Ghost meets Caesar. Or Kaiser. He's settling in pretty well, I think. I will take him down to the festival site later today and introduce him to everyone. Because nothing says responsibility like bringing a dog to a construction site. Hope he at least gets a little hard hat and protective booties. You're gonna come with me everywhere I go, right boy? Bork, bork. Everywhere. Even on dates. Why? Do you not like him? Doesn't matter if I like him. I mean, maybe. Because he's always going to be near me. So if you want to be near me... Ramsey and I might be able to get used to having a dog around. Really? But only if he's a good boy. And you are a good boy, right, Caesar? Bork. Some of my crew members also have dogs, so they've been helping me figure things out. Caesar is my first pet, so I've learned a lot. That new love charm you gave me must have been pretty potent. I care about people and stuff, but I've never felt this way about something before. Like, I've always liked animals, but having an actual pet feels so different. I can't speak to pets, but witches are pretty close to their familiars. Yeah, they're kind of like a partner, right? Yep, yep. Well, except when... <laughs> they tell you not to eat strange fungus. But to be honest, I did it anyway, and maybe he was right. It didn't have much in terms of magical potency, but it certainly caused other rather potent problems. Ramsey didn't come near me for almost a week. I mean, it sounds like Ramsey was just trying to help you. The other day, after I gave Caesar a bath and stuff, I started thinking about when I yelled at my crew again, and I started feeling sad and angry at myself. Caesar came up to me and just put his head in my lap, and I calmed down. It reminded me that even though one that one bad thing happened, my crew helped me a lot with Caesar. So if they aren't still mad at me, maybe I should stop being mad at myself. 
Caesar, you're pretty powerful for just being a pet. Boo boo. Oh, behind the ears. Give me some nice scratches. Yeah. Whoa, you give Caesar pets. Maybe he's all right. You're that Caesar. The wish list, you're all right. I knew you'd come around to him. <sighs> huh? You want to go for a walk? I suppose we could do that. Ghost, do you want to come with us? Let me think. Spending more time with both of you. I think I'd like that. Yeah, we'd like that too, right, Caesar? <laughs> Fucking love that dog. You, Jonas, and Caesar all go for a walk through the woods. Caesar has a good time sniffing around and barking at the birds. You and Jonas joke around and have a good time. Suddenly, Caesar runs off. Caesar, where are you going? Come here. I've had the dog for a few days and I've already lost him. I'm sure he'll come back. Caesar! Caesar! Just as suddenly as he ran off, Caesar comes back. <laughs> Caesar, don't scare me like that. Wait, what do you have there? Jonas takes a bouquet of wildflowers from Caesar's mouth. Damn, that is a good wingman, that dog. Wing dog. Wing pupper. Did you bring me flowers? <laughs> Caesar nudges you with his snout. Oh, am I supposed to give these to... Jonas looks at you. You look at Jonas. Oh, these... These are for you. You take the wildflowers from Jonas. Um, thanks. Work. I should get these into some water. We can walk you home then. We should get to the festival grounds anyway. Jonas and Caesar walk you home. You catch Jonas looking at you out of the corner of your eye. When you do, you both look away from each other, blushing. Well, here we are. Good luck with meeting everyone today, Caesar. I'm sure he'll get along with the crew just fine. Yeah, I think so too. Catch you later. Oh, huh, Venus. Jonas does seem to love Caesar, and it looks like he's being like he's working on being kinder to himself, too. Alright then. That's another thing to take note of in the grimoire. Alright. I believe we have checked in with everyone. Let's go back here. Yeah, these are Extremely expensive. Okay, so we're thinking locket for Devin. Broom for Ruth. And journal for Jean. So I guess tomorrow we might find out who these are intended for. Alright. Let's go home. You already got a treat today, right? Alright. Let's end the day. What time is it in the real world? 4.36. Alright. Do one one more day. It'll probably run us over time, but, uh, whatever. I'm gonna take a moment to stir the chili, though. Don't want to burn the chili. <clears throat> Ramsey, you got something for me, buddy? Do you have a shiny for me? Shiny, shiny? This place really does have a lot of crystals. What is it this time? Ooh. Selenite, or selenite. Something like that. This crystal always reminds me of the moon. What a lovely shade of white. Definitely using this later. Thanks again, Ramsey. All right, let's see what orders we have today. Oh, 
ghost. I did it again. I didn't mean to, but I couldn't stop it. I know I need to take it easier. I know I need to balance everything better, but it's so hard. Do you have a potion or anything that could help? I'm so overwhelmed. Best regards, Mel. She doesn't have her nose dripping, so I'm not doing the cold voice right now. Preserve what little is left of my... I don't know why I'm deciding to do another day when I'm clearly losing my voice already. <laughs> we didn't get to do two full days. Because the full moon one went really quickly. Yo, ghost, I want to fix my relationship with my crew. I think I'm ready to take responsibility for my actions the other day, instead of beating myself up over them. Maybe an oil or something could help? Thanks, Janice. All right. Okay. Hey, a ghost, I want to figure out how to talk to the Fibbly Nibblies, but they're too strong. I know I need to figure out how to change things between us, but I need to know where to find answers. Do you have an oil for that? Misha. Okay. Nice. Antiques discounted. Woo! Whoa, big discounts. Yeah, talk about perfect timing. I don't think I'd be able to afford him in his antiques otherwise. And there are some items I'm thinking of crafting. Um, I'm not entirely sure yet. I'm still figuring them out. But I'll make sure to tell you when I know. You wonder why Jimena's put everything on sale? Maybe she's sick of having her inventory lying around? But we should definitely go check out the sale. Okay. Well, we definitely should. But first, Grimoire. All right, so. Yeah, we've, we've got people mostly figured out now. We just need their, uh, to figure out the, um, crystals for them. I wonder if it's the kind of thing where I'm going to have to, like, choose what to give people or what, like, if I'm going to be able to do the special things for all of them or what, but, okay. Mel needs a potion. Potion. I think, I think the Jonas voice is just my default now. All right, potion. Rosemary. Okay, and I think that's pea flower, the blue. And was that hollyhock? Hollyhock. Hollyhock. All right. Potion has stopped getting overwhelmed. Jonas needs an oil. Taking up oil wrestling, apparently. Come on. If only my pen would work. All right, he needs an oil to help him apologize. Heart. Rose. Pea flower. And hollyhock. Okay then. The siblings need quite similar things today. And last but not least, Naisha also needs an oil. And she needs rosemary. Is that geranium? Geranium, yes. Geranium, um, 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 um. and allium. Allium. All right. <laughs> no, Ariana's Wi-Fi broke. That is. Tragic. All right. Um, potion is these bottles, yes. Oh, right. I should probably tend to my garden. Let's see. How are we doing on oh, rosemary? Hmm. Could use more. Pea flowers, pretty all right. Could use more hollyhock. Geranium, definitely don't need more. Okay. Rose, we're definitely good on. Okay. Stop trying to hit the exit key. All right. Gardening. Garden time. All right. I've already forgotten what I said. It's 
snip, snip, snip. Freshen everybody up. I think hollyhock I need more of. <laughs> Having YouTube and Twitch open at the same time can complicate things. All right, hollyhock. Snip, snip. We're definitely good on geraniums. All right. And you. Snip, snip. Snip, snip. Snip, snip. Snip, snip. Snip, snip. So snippy. Okay. And some weeding. Make our little bags of poop. Poop, poop, poop. <laughs> At the same time, texting with a moderator from a Twitch streamer on WhatsApp. Dang, that is a lot going on. All right. What do I need? Hollyhock? I needed more of. So let's get some more Hollyhock. Let's spruce, spruce up a couple for snippies. And maybe a little more rosemary, because the rosemary only comes up every couple days. Snippy, snippy. All right, should be good. And the home. Oh, nice. So you're, you're friends with the moderator. Cool. Sweet. Uh, potion with rosemary, pea flower, and hollyhock. Beautiful. Mm. The potions and stuff are so pretty in this game. Boundaries potion. All right, and then we need an oil. I think that's the thing for oils. With rose, pea flower, and hollyhock. Very similar. Just rose instead of rosemary, and oil instead of potion. Forgive oil. Oh, it's so pretty. So pretty. Okay, and another oil. Rosemary. Geranium. And allium. Alright. <laughs> oh, he's cute and flirty, but he lives in Germany. That is a bit, a bit far. Oh, that is so pretty. All right. I just want to take all of these. <laughs> all right. To the village. Let's check out this sale. Oh, did you get my letter? Does that mean you're here to buy my antiques? I sure hope it is. I'm thinking of, do of doing a bit of rebranding after the festival. Maybe something like Jimena's Common Goods. Nothing exciting sold here. Not that I'm not glad you've been a loyal customer during your stay, but I need more than one customer to keep this shop open. That's enough of me. Enjoy the low prices. Okay. So. That is significantly better. Oh. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. <laughs> he said I'm cute and I'm mad. Oh. That seems... Like he's just gonna find excuses to piss you off, honestly. <laughs> Buy them all! Buy them all! 
was like, how the hell are we going to get $4,000 for any of these things? All right, so I've bought all the antiques. The antiques. Um, how many do I have? I've only got one oil thing left, so let's replenish that. Got one resin left. I've got a couple of the other things. Okay, so I've got two of everything. All right. We've got our antiques. We're stocked up on everything. Let's let's go sell some spells. All right. Let's start over here again. Let's talk to Naisha. You approach the art studio and you hear what you think is Naisha pacing back and forth. If you're not going to let me work, I don't know what to do. She must be fighting with the Fibbly Nibblies again. I better get in there. You walk into the studio. Ghost, I'm at my wit's end. Do you have that spell I asked for? Let me see. Here it is. Divination oil. I guess that's the... Which one? Ah, divination oil. There we go. Perfect. Divination oil. This should let me talk with them, right? Uh, not entirely. Also, I wouldn't recommend trying that again after our last attempt. You do have a close relationship with the Fibbly Nibblies, but that relationship is too strained to confront them directly without an experienced witch. Then what's the point of this oil? You ordered it. I feel like I'm almost there with figuring out this community mur mural project. Is there any way to figure out what to do without talking directly to the Fibbly Nibblies? Hmm. Is there a way? Hmm. Is there a way? I should just yell at them some more, ignore them until they crumble, fumigate them. Fumigate them? Oh, it should be something you have experience in doing. You don't want the Fibbly Nibblies to destroy the studio again. Maybe you could figure out what to do, but not at the studio. Safely away from those spiteful spirits. You did sense Naisha's desire for the divination oil from her letter. Is there a form of divination you could do? That's it. Let's do a tarot reading and see what the cards say. Is this something you can actually do? Of all the forms of divination, it is the one I'm most familiar with, yes. Of course, I'm still learning, but there aren't consequences with tarot readings. Well, at least nothing like spirits wrecking your art studio. Let's try it then. Where do we get a tarot deck, though? I have one at my place. We can do it there. Yeah, that's probably best. Who knows what the Fibbly Nibblies would try if we did it here. Let's get going, then. You and Naisha make your way to your home. You and Aisha will make your way to your home. Wow, I haven't been here in ages. It still looks the same as I remember it. Yeah, I didn't bother to change anything considering I'm not here for that long. Well, that and I kind of like the place already. <laughs> I keep my deck on my altar. Let's do the reading there. All right. You and Aisha stand over the altar. First, let's apply this oil. Okay. And then let me shuffle the cards to cleanse them of their old energy. You take the cards in your hands and shuffle them a few times. So, how does this work? First, we need to decide what spread we want. I think a four-card spread might be best. As I said, I'm still learning, so I'd like to avoid the more complex ones, if that's all right. As long as I get answers. I think of it more as guidance than answers. Let's just get started. You draw four cards. Okay. Very slowly. The first card will tell us the problem we're facing. The second card is the obstacle. The third card is the recommended action to take. And lastly, the fourth card shows the outcome. Sounds straightforward enough. Well, we see if that remains true once we flip the cards. Let's see what the first card is. The Magician. Ooh. Wow, these cards are beautiful. Did you draw them yourself? 
<laughs> no, actually, my grand made this deck for me. Our family's custom is that the head witch gives a tarot deck to their apprentices once they start training. I feel like I could le learn a thing or two from your grand. She's an excellent artist. Anyway, what does this card mean? So this is the magician depicted by a plant called Dittany of Crete. This card symbolizes skill, focused energy, and manifestations. Though we're reading this card for a tricky situation, the card is probably telling us there's a lack of these things. I have skills. I don't think the card necessarily means your artistic skill in this case. Remember, we're asking what to do about the fibbly nibblies. I think in this case, the card is saying that maybe you and their energies are out of sync. Somehow you aren't communicating effectively, so you can't harness each other's energy. What do you think? Hmm. I guess it's figuring out how to communicate then, but we tried that and it didn't work. I wouldn't say that was our best attempt, though. So the card is telling us there's something more to do there. Maybe we should go ahead and turn the next card. Oh, yeah, boy. So our obstacle is the devil. And now this one makes perfect sense. Hang on, this card might not mean what you think it does. But it does mean that there is some sort of chaos going on in your life, perhaps some manipulation and confusion. But I remember when my grand talked to me about this card and why she chose the sundew to represent it. And I was like, it's carnivorous, duh. And she said, yes, that was part of it. But when people first started collecting sundews, they thought they were the most darling plants. And then they discovered they were carnivorous. Someone exclaimed that sundews were then vegetable wickedness. And my grand thought that was hysterical. When you're dealing with the devil, sometimes you need to just laugh at the absurdities of things. Sometimes by not embracing the chaos, you cause more friction. So it's pretty funny that the whole little like description of sundew there because the dev studio is sundew studios. So that's, that's pretty cool that they've got a little little lore drop, I guess, in the game. I have been trying to cut them out of my life more recently, more so than I did when I was younger. Even then, it's not like they didn't cause trouble. I liked the fibbly nibblies, but it was exhausting being the weird girl in class. I just wanted to fit in. Did you ever think you were weird? What? No. I always thought I was fine. It was everyone else. I could be myself with the fibbly nibblies. Hmm. Let's pull the next card. Temperance. So temperance represents the actions you can take. Hmm, this is interesting. In a good or bad way? Well, it implies something in your life needs healing. And since this reading is regarding the fibbly nibblies and what you should do about them, it might be that the two of you need to do some healing work, which is a step beyond communicating. I tried asking them what they wanted before. I feel like that wasn't the right approach. It might be more of more what the both of you want. Temperance usually means something along the lines of cooperation and finding harmony. The other curious thing is temperance is number 14, while the devil is number 15. So if you can heal your relationship, you might find harmony in the chaos. But how do I heal my relationship with them? You said you used to play with them as a kid, right? Yeah. Have you tried that recently? No, I mean, I'm not a kid anymore. So maybe it's not playing with them like when you were a kid, but somehow still including them in your life. You said they were a big source of your creativity, so maybe it's something along the lines of that? Hmm, maybe you're right. So what's the outcome? The Empress. <laughs> the outcome is the Empress. What's so funny about that? The Empress is a card of creativity. Uncontrolled creativity at that. It's also a card of nurturing. If there was a card to represent you, I think this would be it. The Empress. I think I could work with that. But what could it imply for me in the Fibbly Nibblies? So it sounds like if you're able to find balance with the Fibbly Nibblies, you might become even more creative. What I thought was holding me back all my life might be my way forward. 
That's what the cards seem to say. Of course, this is going to take some work on your end. Yeah, it will. There's not much time, either. Maybe this festival piece can be the start of something new with the Fibbly Nibblies. Yeah, maybe it could be. I wish there was some way to at least set us up to work peacefully together. Devin always says you can sort all your problems over a cup of tea. Tea, huh? That gives you an idea. If only life were that simple. Hmm. I'm going to head back to the studio. Maybe I can start to refigure things out there. Sounds good. I'm glad the tarot readings seem to help. I've never done a reading for anyone else before. It was an exciting experience. Here's to both of us learning new things today. I'll get going, though. Thanks again for your help, ghost. You know, Jimena has that old teapot at our store. Not anymore, she doesn't. We bought it. I own it now. I wonder if I could make something with that. Naisha might not realize it, but Devin is on to something. Okay, so Naisha's the teapot. Interesting, interesting. Speaking of Devin, let's go talk to Devin. I wonder how Devin's meeting with Ruth and Mel went yesterday. They seemed confident enough. You knock on the music, doors, uh, music studio door. Ghost, I'm so glad you're here. Whoa, did I do something? Yes, you helped me big time. The countdown meditation, along with the confidence spell, really worked. Ruth and Mel loved the song I composed. Really? That's great to hear. Though I wouldn't give myself too much credit. You're the one who wrote the song, after all. Yeah, but without your help, I would have been too nervous about playing it properly, you know? Oh, Devin, you're too sweet. It's true, though. I really don't know what I would have done without you. Or what I'm going to do without you. Awkward. Devon, I... Ghost, I... You go first! No, you! <laughs> it's just these past weeks have been really great. Even with all their ups and downs. I was about to say the same thing. But let's not focus on the sad stuff just yet. We've still got a few days, and then there's the festival. What's left for you to do before the festival? Now that the song got approved, the musicians need to practice it. I don't think that'll be too hard, though. They all seem pretty skilled. I also offered to help finalize the lineup and run the stage for the festival. Wow. <laughs> Ramsey and I have a pretty good act. <laughs> to make the whole crowd disappear? How did you know? I'm pretty excited, though. It feels really great to bring all the musicians together. I think we're really going to capture the spirit of Flora with our music. Together! It's really great seeing you this excited. Well, we'll see how I feel the day of. I think you're going to be just fine. As an artist, it feels like I should want to be the center of attention. And there's an expectation that I should constantly be putting myself out there. But it's so exhausting, and then I spend all my time stressing out about... I could be working on composing or collaborating with other musicians instead, you know? I don't get why making art never actually feels like it's about making art. Does that make sense? I think so. Basically, you want to make music without all the other stuff. I just want to study witchcraft without all my family's expectations. Those expectations are made up, anyway, and for some reason they all just seem to accept it. None of them seem happy about it, either. Yeah, that's it exactly. I was kind of amazed when I was honest with everyone at the full moon ritual. Everyone was just all right with it. I've never had that happen before. Usually I get told if I don't do things exactly this way that I'll never make it. But you know what? I think that's nonsense. Yeah! I'm liking this rebel energy, although let's burn it down is pretty good too. <laughs> but it's not the romance option, so we're not doing it. I am feeling a little fired up, but maybe I should calm down a bit. There's still a festival to focus on. I should probably be getting back to the music too. Still got lots to do, uh, lots to do, and only a few days left. Yep, yep. Let's do our best. They're such a cutie. Mm, this feeling again. This time it's the amethyst. That'd be perfect for Devon's locket. Amethyst has protective qualities and helps quiet the mind. 
So if they don't have time for a countdown meditation, the amethyst could help instead. Let me write this down in my grimoire. Okay. Let's go check on Jonas. You see Jonas and Caesar at the festival grounds and walk over to them. Hey, ghost. Bork, bork. You got that spell I asked for? Let me see. Yep, right here. The forgive oil. You hand Jonas the forgive oil. You can tell he's feeling apprehensive about it. Just chug it down. <laughs> You worried it's gonna backfire? No, actually. I'm just afraid it won't work at all. What if my crew doesn't forgive me? Or even worse, what if they forgive me, but I lose my temper again? Then it means using this, spoil th th this spell is pointless. Yeesh, if Jonas is this worried about the spell, it really won't work. Nothing will work with that attitude. Aren't most things pointless, or then we'll just need to blank. Nothing will work with that attitude. So, um, we need to figure something else out, don't we? Am I doomed? Ah! Uh, you can tell a massive freak-out meltdown is imminent. But you really don't want to try anything that can make it worse. Think, ghost, think! I mean, yeah, I would tell them, like, why don't you, why don't you pet your dog for a bit? Because, like, genuinely, if you're having a panic attack or something, just, like, pet petting an animal can be really good. can be really helpful. Oh, what is it, Caesar? Mur -mur. Is something wrong? Caesar rolls over on his back. I think he wants pets. I think he definitely wants pets. Jonas starts giving Caesar belly scratches. Oh, I'm sorry, scratchies. Yeah, he's a good boy. It's really hard to do like the -do 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 -do, like the, the talking to cute animals voice and the Jonas voice. They're like such completely different registers that it's so like... <laughs> It's really hard to, to mesh the two. Caesar looks up at you. Work, work. I think he wants you to pet him too. Hmm. Give him scratchies. He's so soft and fluffy. You and Jonas keep petting Caesar. He seems very, very happy. But you realize you feel very, very happy too. You look at Jonas. He also seems very, very happy. Could it be? That Caesar sensed both your stress levels rising? Caesar stands up and does a big shake. I guess he's had his fill. I'm feeling more relaxed now. Yeah, me too. Are you ready to give that forgive oil a shot? I still don't feel ready, to be honest. Obviously, I love petting Caesar. But I feel like I need something I can do to just, I don't know, prepare my brain for this stuff. Does that make sense? It totally does. Hang on, let me think. You notice your mind feels clearer now after petting Caesar. Maybe that dog is some sort of familiar. Anyway, Jonas needs something to prepare his mind to use magic, but it sounds like he needs something to break his negative thought patterns. You know, he asked for magical words before. Maybe words are exactly what he needs. Hey Jonas, have you ever heard of affirmations? I feel like I've heard Mel mention those before. She probably has. They're a pretty common tool which is used to give themselves a quick boost. Are they magical? Um, they're more of a focusing tool, I would say. I find them pretty helpful, and they're simple if you want to try them out. Nothing weird will happen? Nope. And we'll only start with using a few so you don't get overwhelmed. Alright then, how do we do these affirmations? First, we need to identify what exactly is making you feel anxious. Let's start with maybe three key things. Hmm, one is definitely that I'm not working hard enough to overcome my anger. Uh, a second one would be, well, that I'm just a bother to other people, like Mel and Jonas and my crew. Third, if I try to talk to people about how I feel, they'll think I'm weak. Are those good? Yep. Let's start with working to overcome your anger. Okay. So, working to overcome your anger. But it's not just anger, right? No, anger is usually the result when everything gets to be too much. Now, I am working on that, or at least I have in the past, but I feel like it's not enough. But you are working on it. Yeah, of course. So how about we come up with an affirmation about making progress instead? To help you focus on how you are working on it and making progress. 
Bell always says progress isn't linear. Maybe she's right. So how about... Hmm. I am overcoming my challenges steadily each day. Every day presents a new chance for growth. My efforts are worthy. I can envision my success. Hmm. I like every day presents a new chance for growth. I think that's a good one. Every day presents a new chance for growth. Wow, that's really true, isn't it? Yep, see, just saying it out helps, doesn't it? Affirmations are intense! Next, let's do your relationship with friends and family. You're afraid you're too much for people. As if you need too much help? That, and I guess that they constantly have to be worrying about me. Not that it's bad to think about other people at all. But I mean more like they have to manage me. I don't want them to feel that way. Do you, do they make you feel that way when you try to tell them how you're feeling? Um, not usually. I mean, there have been people in the past, but they were also kind of mean. I feel like you need to believe that other people care about you and that they're listening to you isn't managing you, but showing that they care about you. Oh yeah, maybe. So how about, um, I am loved and valued by my friends and family. People admire and respect me. I am worth it. I recognize my worth. My life is full of love. Hmm. I feel like it's really hard to start off with things like, I am worth it. I recognize my worth. Like, that can be really, really challenging. Um, so I think, like, believing the best of your friends and family that they love and value you is probably the easiest one to start with. I am loved and valued by my friends and family. Wow, saying that out loud feels weird, even though I know it's true. Then you just need to practice until it doesn't feel weird. Yeah, you're right. And lastly, communication. You're afraid that if you tell people how you're feeling, they'll look down on you? Yeah, like, I'd be a terrible leader, or that I can't handle anything in general. It catches people off guard that I get overwhelmed and need time to cool down. I like being around people, but sometimes it can get to be too much. But I also know the only way for people to know that is for me to tell them. I like to believe that people are more understanding than I sometimes want to give credit. But there's always that fear, you know? I guess if I tell them and they still don't listen, then maybe it's not my problem anymore, though. I don't know. Let's try an affirmation saying your wants and needs are valid. You're right that some people will respect that, but others won't. But that doesn't change the validity of your wants and needs. How about we go with something like, my needs are valid, communication is a strength, I am worthy of being heard, listening is a form of love, my wants and needs are the keys to my success. I think my needs are valid, communication is a strength. My needs are valid, communication is a strength. Jonah seems taken aback by his own words. You have a good feeling about this affirmation. Yeah, I like that. Great, we've got three affirmations. Let's go over them one more time. Every day presents a new chance for growth. Now the second one. I am loved by my friends and family. And lastly, my needs are valid. Communication is a strength. I feel like I can already feel my mindset changing just by saying these three affirmations today. Just imagine how they'll make you feel with even more practice. When you feel ready, go ahead and use the forgive oil too if you think you still need the extra push. Thanks a lot, ghost. You know, Mel is always burning candles and stuff when she does her thinking stuff. I wonder if she'd let me borrow one when I'm practicing. But maybe I should just focus on these affirmations first. Hmm, candles. What, is it a bad idea for something? No, not at all. It just got me thinking, but it's nothing. Mm -hmm. Well, I should get going. Of course. Make sure to let me know how the affirmations go. Will do. A candle. Pretty sure the shop has an old candle holder. I could probably put something together for Jonas using that. Okay, I'm going to check on the chili. I know I'm constantly taking chili checking breaks, but I really don't want to burn it. Alright, and 
back we go. Jean. You walk up to Jean's cafe and see a closed sign on the door. But the lights are on. That's strange. Maybe I'll take a quick peek to see if Jean is here. You walk back to the kitchen where you hear someone furiously whisking. Kitty Cam. Hi, son. Hi, little bear. You the cutest little man. Yeah, you're a cutie boy. You pop your head through the door and see Jean standing over a massive bowl of batter. He looks up at you. You look at Jean. Jean nods his head and gives you a thumbs up. You take that as saying everything is fine. Thank you for the release spell and for eating the Madelines out of the trash. It was highly effective, but now I have a lot of batter to make. In very little time. And while I would love to share my delicious baked goods with my favorite witch in training, okay, maybe that's pushing it, but I need to focus right now. Please come back at a later time. <laughs> give a big thumbs up, give a small nod of understanding, or salute! Let's give a big thumbs up. You leave the cafe with an empty stomach, but a full heart. I can't wait to taste even more of the Madelines. I'm so glad Jean's recipe worked out. Oh, this feeling again. Jade. The crystal of success and grounding. I could see how that would suit Jean. Yeah, I'll add that to gr my grimoire. Adding it to the grimoire. All right, and now talk to Mel. Why not? Please let me find Mel neither sick nor tired. Please let me find Mel neither sick nor tired. You walk into Mel's office, but, huh, where's Mel? Oh no, did she not recover? She's supposed to be here. Maybe she just stepped out? Then leave the spell on her desk. Boundaries potion. Yeah, I'll just put it right. Ah! And that's when you see her. Mel crouched underneath her desk, muttering something to herself. Oh, thank God she's not sick anymore. I did it again. I woke up today and told myself I wouldn't do it, but I still did. Another Covenpolitan ritual? No. I said yes to everyone. I said I would handle everything. And now here I am, overwhelmed again. I can't get sick. I need to sleep. The festival preparations won't go well if I don't stay well. Can you go back and just tell everyone no? No! Well, I guess I could. Delegation, that's right. I can delegate, or rather, redelegate. But I feel so worked up, I can't even think about that. What would I even delegate? Where would I start? Someday, someday, you'll find Mel in a sane state again. Unfortunately, it might be too late to use this boundaries spell. You would want to use it before removing your boundaries. Oh no, I messed up your magic again. That's not what I meant. I just have to push through this again, don't I? But I don't want you to help me with that. This is my responsibility, and my responsibility alone. Oh, jeez. If you let Mel handle this alone, you know it won't end well. At the same time, using more magic will probably backfire like it did previously. What could help Mel? A quick coffee break, a nap. You do know this one spell. A nap? No way. Mel would never agree to that. Besides, she couldn't even... She probably couldn't even get to sleep in this state. But then what? Wait! The boundary spell. Maybe it's not too late. We can use it to help Mel redelegate her tasks. But we need to get her into a state where she can think about redelegating. Huh. Is everything all right? You're being quiet. And that's when it hits you. A bird, it hit my windshield. Mel, I have an idea. You do? Can we still use the spell? Not yet, but we're going to do an envisioning exercise. And then, when you feel ready, you can then use the boundary spell. Envisioning? Is this some sort of mental exercise? Yep, we're going to envision how you wish things would be. So, like, envisioning myself redelegating the tasks. I kind of want to go more general than that. Let's try envisioning your perfect day. We can try to form a day where redelegating isn't even an issue. Having a clear idea of what you want might make it easier to happen. 
And then the more focused intention will help the boundary spell too. I see, I see. All right, let's try it. Okay, let's get ourselves into a comfortable seated position. You and Mel take a seat across from each other. Now let's take a deep breath. You close your eyes. You feel your jaw drop. Then tension in your forehead falls away. Your shoulders hang loosely with your hands on your laps. Your body both feels light yet grounded. Now, Mel, we're going to walk through a day in your life, okay? Mel nods her head in agreement. It's morning and you've just woken up. What do you do? Jean's probably already awake. I can smell coffee and some freshly baked scones coming from the kitchen. Oh, that's adorable. I get up, brush my teeth, get dressed, and then sit with him at the table. We talk about what we're doing that day and say when we expect to get home. Sean heads out before me and I clean up the kitchen before heading to the office. Wonderful. Now let's take another deep breath. You and Mel take a deep breath. You can feel your breath deep in your lungs. Oh, as you exhale, you feel all the tension again leaving your body. Oh, great, now tell me about your walk to the office. It's a beautiful day outside. Most days in Flora are beautiful. Kids are playing by the lake. I can hear Jonas and his crew working hard at the festival grounds. I'm glad Jonas moved out here with us. I've, it feels like he's finally found a place he fits in. I look over at your cottage and I'm so happy to see your garden blooming. Finally, things are feeling right again. Before I know it, I've arrived at the town hall to start my day. Very good. Now let's once again relax our muscles. You unclench your jaw and let your shoulders fall. Then tension in your forehead falls away. Your body both feels light yet grounded once again. Now for your work day. How do you imagine that going? This is supposed to be an ideal situation, right? Yep. Well, I walk into the town hall and our secretary immediately greets me. Then I head up to the mayor's office and of course she's already working. We have a quick morning meeting to discuss what needs to be done and the state of things. Then a few other people join us from various committees. Now in an ideal setting, we all figure out the best way to approach the tasks at hand. The mayor's hands are already full, so I agree to be the one to come to if any problems should arise. Everyone walks away from our meeting with a clear list of what's to get done and who is to do it. I have my tasks, but I'm also available to help if needed. Throughout the day, I get asked a few questions and advice on things, but everyone can do their work, and I trust that they can get that they can do this work on their own. Things aren't falling apart if I don't know what's happening all the time. Okay? Now for the end of your day. But first, let's take a quiet moment. You focus on the sounds around you, the murmuring of conversations in the hallway, the chirping of birds outside the window, the soft summer breeze. For a moment, the world is alive and yet still. Your mind is quiet once again. The end of the day is simple. I stop by the mayor's office to let her know I'm heading out. Then I meet Jean at his cafe he gives me whatever he's just baked and a cup of tea. We chit-chat for a little, but he's still working, so I head home. While I wait for Jean, I sit on the couch and do some knitting. Oh, <laughs> then once he's home, we have a simple dinner, talk a little more, and go to bed. Mel opens her eyes. Not a very exciting ideal day, is it? It seems a lot more relaxed than your days now. 
Well, that is partly due to the festival, but I do think things could stand to be a bit calmer, and I do believe I have a big part to play in that. There aren't many days left until the festival. Maybe for the rest of the day I'll make a clear plan for the next few days, and tomorrow I'll present it to everyone. Perhaps at this point it's not worth getting nitpicky about small details, and I'll make sure to use that boundary spell that way I'll be sure to delegate, instead of being a control freak. So you think the envisioning helped? Yeah, I do. It's crazy how easy it is to forget to think and reflect sometimes. I wish I had something that could help give me the time. Give you the time? Could I make something like that? I guess it's better late than ever. <laughs> but I feel like I've taken up much of your time. I should let you get going. I'm just glad I could help. I hope your planning goes well. Thanks. Could I make something for Mel that could give her the time? You know, Jimena's shop has that old hourglass. I wonder if I could put something together with that. <laughs> and last but not least, let's talk to Ruth. And then we should wrap up, because it's like 5.30. And I still need to make the rice for the chili. You approach Ruth's office. I wonder how the memory incense went. It seemed like Ruth found the walking meditation helpful, too. Knock on the door. Ruth, are you busy? Ghost, I am busy, but that doesn't mean I don't have time for a chat. How are you doing? I came here to ask you that. You seem to be in a pretty, uh, to be in pretty good spirits. I am. I woke up this morning full of energy. Perhaps our little trip up the mountain helped with that. Have you used the memory incense yet? No, actually. I wanted to practice a bit more of what you taught me the other day. But even so, I think getting everything off my chest over these past couple of days, and then taking a small break from things, it's all left me feeling unexpectedly rejuvenated. I suppose knowing what I want has given me some motivation. Naisha and I have already been discussing all the places I should visit. And of course, Mel is starting to make post-festival plans, too. She never stops that one. Who knew a young witch could have such a big impact on our small village? Hmm? I am a Von Teasel, after all. I do what I do, or... But it could be bigger. For the festival, I was thinking of having explo... I'm going to assume you're only joking. Fine. I am joking. Honestly, I was a little worried in the beginning, but I knew Margie had her reasons for sending you. You really think my grand planned this? Planned might be a strong term, but she probably saw an opportunity. I get the feeling the grand I know is different from the one you know. That's possibly true. Your family is known for being rather strict. Perhaps Margie saw a bit of herself in you, and wanted you to have the option to go down a different path than the one she took. I don't know what path that is. Maybe it's just the one that sent you here. But don't I have to leave? Suddenly you hear footsteps running down the hall. Mayor, we have a cra- Oh, ghost. Sorry, am I interrupting? Nope, I think we were just wrapping up. Um, yeah. Okay, good, because you better come quick. The napkins just got delivered, and they are not the ones I specified. All right, I'm coming. See you later, ghost. Yep, yep. Huh. This feeling again. Is this selenite? Or selenite? It is the crystal for wisdom and unblocking energy. Yeah. That would be a good addition to Ruth's enchanted besom, 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 the little broom. Let me make a note of it in my grimoire. Okay, now that my voice is more or less completely gone, I can wrap up the day. Okay, I don't think I've got any new things. Now it lets me put the jade egg. <laughs> uh, 
that's pretty cool. I like the like the jaded egg. That's just fucking hilarious. Okay. Let's go to bed. End that day. Ooh, we completed all of Ruth's friend events. We're friends with Ruth. All right. So we are not continuing on right now. Sorry, Ramsey. We'll continue next week. Thank you so much for hanging out, joining in, you know, embracing our worst selves and our best selves simultaneously. Thank you, Little Bear, for being very cute on kitten cam right now, my sweet boy. Oh, my sleepy little prince. And, yeah, I will see you next week. Uh, Tuesday at 7, we will hopefully be able to stream some more Thirsty Suitors. And then Thursday at 3, I'll be back with more Witchy Life Story. More Ghost Von Teasel. Doing honor and or dishonor to the Von Teasel family name. And flirting with everyone who's flirt withable. All right. Have a great one. Enjoy your remainder of the day. And I'll see you again soon. Bye.